Hello, my name is Alex Gilson, also known as Alex G from worldofleveldesign.com. And in this series of videos that I did for you guys, we are going to cover modeling interior environments using Maya. Uh, here are a few things that we're going to focus on. Uh, so uh, this is what we're going to cover and uh, hopefully you will learn a lot. Modeling scene workflow, modeling to scale, setting up custom shelf to, uh, for modeling so you don't have to go in the drop down menus you're able to access them faster uh, we're gonna use box modeling we're also gonna cover extrusion bevel uh, we'll do a little bit of nerve modeling uh, we'll uh, do quite a few things using curves and then loft in between curves and extrude along curves as well uh, we'll also cover a few basic things with hypershade and we'll use some paint effects to add to our scene to actually uh, make some of our stuff faster so we don't have to model quite a few things and throughout the video you will hear me talk about the possibly that I will light this whole scene later and I did not do the modeling um, I did not do the lighting part of this uh, tutorial because once I came to uh, time to light I realized that my ambition was too much greater than I uh, was anticipated for so all we're gonna do is model so ignore me talking about lighting because for such a huge environment uh, that would take twice as long as than the modeling did and what I want to do is just release this to you guys as fast as possible so uh, you get the value out of it and perhaps later down the road I will do a lighting maybe using the same environment or possibly I'll just do a completely new scene and uh, something more basic so then I can focus just on lighting and not modeling and lighting so every time I start a project uh, one of the things that I do is I spend quite a few days planning and making sure that everything is set for me to start I don't just jump in Maya and just uh, get a couple of reference images and begin modeling I really really urge you to uh, spend a couple of days and plan everything on paper and uh, one of the things that I wanted to get out of this project and this particular scene modeling environment I've never done before I've done environments before using Unreal and Source but I've never done anything like it using Maya and at school we did uh, quite a few environments but I did it just to satisfy the project so I can focus on animation so I'm never actually focused on modeling specifically uh, an interior using Maya and uh, this is going to be the first for me and uh, hopefully you know you'll learn a few things as uh, as I did so here are a few things that uh, I planned for in my mind that I wanted to get out of this project and uh, I wanted to improve my modeling interior environment skills I also wanted to model a realistic interior environment and another thing is I wanted to record my whole process of modeling and teach it to others because once uh, when you learn something and you turn around and apply it you learn ten times as much if you the speed of impl implementation is what we're going after and if you can turn around and also teach it to others uh, that it also increases your uh, ability to just hold that information for longer and you're able to just learn a lot faster when you can just turn around and just teach it to somebody else so quite uh, here are a few things that I would highly recommend for any project and I'm not gonna spend too much time on this but uh, I, I do wanna hit uh, a few points uh, one is you should always set a deadline um, it doesn't matter if you uh, go over or go under uh, in terms of the deadline um, when you set something you have a goal to achieve so you will actually use the time in between now and your deadline to accomplish what you need if you don't have a deadline then I mean you'll, you'll procrastinate and I, I am guilty of it so that's why uh, I've, I've, even if it's a personal project I always set a deadline and sometimes when, when I don't is when I don't get that thing done so I urge you to 
set a deadline. Another thing is break your project up to a day by day basis. So grab a piece of paper and just uh, find out when your deadline is and how many days you have between now and your deadline. And number all of those days that you have uh, in between and then just start planning uh, what's going to be done on day one, what's going to be done on day two and go uh, on and on until you hit the deadline date and those would be your um, your goals and your marks that you want to hit as you go along in, uh, in your project and so if it takes longer that's fine but at least you have something to aim for and uh, also, just like uh, what we did before, what I showed you, what I wanted to learn from this uh, project, uh, you should do the same thing: is um, write down what you would want to learn for a specific project. And uh, one of the reasons that I wanted to do uh, this video is one is I've never done anything like it before. So what I was going to learn, um, you will see me learn at the same time and teach it back to you and I wanted to kind of step out of my comfort zone something that I've never done before so I'm going to do a lot more of these and uh, that way I'll push myself to learn something and hopefully I'll push you to learn uh, to learn more that you uh, things you've never done before as well so and always push to learn new things and out of your comfort zone so research reference and sketching so this is my idea the idea is uh, a champagne bar in Plaza Hotel and uh, I've researched quite a few environments uh, basic rooms uh, I look through a lot of magazines interior design magazines architectural digest and this I, I found this and I completely fa fell in love with it and it's just it's a beautiful environment to me and it's a place I really want to go to and uh, it's in it's in New York City, in Manhattan, and it's six hundred dollars a night. I found out, and it, it'd be a great place to stay. Not yet, because I don't have that much money. Uh, that kind of money to stay in one night for six hundred bucks, uh, but uh, s someday soon. And here are my reference that I collected. Uh, they're just you go to images.google.com you type in what you're looking for and I just go through um, what I can find and just collect all the images I currently have a folder over one gig worth of information on just images that I collected over the years and they include uh, video games they include movies uh, color composition shots architecture concept art uh, anything you can imagine so there's a uh, here's more reference images and uh, I also do a lot of sketching and these are just very rough sketches that I do but what it uh, teaches me is to look at composition to look at form uh, look at mass and uh, line and just uh, it, it makes me understand the environment a lot better uh, is when I sit down and start sketching out uh, certain things from the environment so here's more of just chairs, um, furniture, just uh, understanding direction, understanding form, shape, uh, line quality, and just uh, I, when I model, I always also reference back to my sketches and to understand how it will move in 3D and how it will look in 3D. And my sketches help me out a lot. So here's the final model, the interior environment. And uh, here are some uh, just a, a screen grabs that I did. And here's the last one. So let's begin. <laughs> 